Ready? Okay, so we're gonna talk about oxygen devices and the ones that you're gonna use in the ER. So the first one is nasal cannula, okay? I'm sure most everyone has seen that before. So onto the wall and then flows are um, 0.25 liters up to six liters, okay? Up to six liters, that's it. So nasal cannula. Oh, and please make sure that the prongs are going downward. So into the nose, this way, not this way. That makes sense. Okay. So nasal cannula. The next one is, we'll do a venti mask. Now this one you probably don't use a lot. Um, the, what the RTs use it for um, right now is that we use it for, to transport a trait patient. So what we do is we pull this mask off. This one comes off like this and we put a trait mask onto here. Okay. Then you, then it hangs like this on the trach. Okay. But you need to know a couple things about it. So your oxygen tubing comes in the package and it goes right on to the end. Just like that. And we'll put the mask back on. Okay. Then you might have to come closer. There are different oxygen percentages with the leader flow. So if you look here, 35 to 50% is run at six liters and 24 to 31 is run at three liters, okay? So what you do is you pull them apart and then you line the arrow up with what percentage you're looking for. Okay, so if I'm gonna do 50%, it would look like look like that and then I'd run it as six liters on the wall okay the other thing it comes with is this little cup and what it actually does is it protects I get this off Ooh. it protects the venti device right here so this is a venti device and how it works is it entrains air from the outside along with the oxygen here and it spits out this percentage so what this does is you put it on the end here and then it protects the venti device here from getting covered up with blankets or the patient grabbing it and it would mess up the concentration in here. So you can put that on and then put your tubing right underneath it. So it would look like that. Okay. So you're probably not going to use this a lot on a patient um, like this, but you're probably going to use it more with a trach mask to transport a patient. Okay. So that's that one. The next one is non rebreather. So your non rebreather comes with your tubing attached with the mask and then your bag, your reservoir bag. So you're going to hook this up to the oxygen on the wall and most RTs will just hook it right to 15 liters because the thing about it is, is your minimum flow is six liters, right? To, to inflate the bag and then keep it from rebreathing CO2 inside the mask. You got to have six liters to push CO2 out of the mask. So it doesn't matter if you're on six liters, seven, eight, 10, or 15, it's 100% coming through this mask because the reservoir bag fills up with the oxygen, which is concentrated at 100%, and then it opens when the patient breathes through this little valve. So they get 100% oxygen every single time. So it really doesn't matter if you run it at six liters or 15 liters, it's 100%. So that's why you never hear an RT say, I wean them down from the non breather because you can't wean them off of it. So the only reason that the flow is either somewhere between 6 and 15 is because when the patient breathes in, and I'll hook it up, I'll run it at 6 liters and wait for the bag to inflate. So you can see it inflates pretty slowly, right? If I'm breathing really hard, see the bag collapse all the way? So you don't want the you don't want the bag to collapse more than half when they breathe in. So what the flow does is if they're collapsing that bag at six liters like this, then I need to go up on my flow because they're not getting enough flow. So if I go to 15 and wait for it to go, I don't know if I can collapse it at 15, but we'll see. Can I collapse it? Uh huh. Okay. okay. So it is possible that they could collapse it, but most patients are not going to collapse it at 15 breathing. Now I had to suck in. So if I'm just breathing normal, I'm not collapsing.
collapsing that bag. Right? I mean, okay. you have to really suck hard to get that to collapse. So it just needs to stay half inflated when they breathe in. So the flow is dependent on how much they're collapsing the bag, not the percentage of oxygen they're getting. They're getting 100% no matter what. It's just how much flow do you need to keep that bag inflated, okay? So you don't wean a patient on a non-rebreather. If they don't need the 100% anymore, then we're gonna go to a different device. We're gonna go back to a nasal cannula, or we could go to an oxy mask or something like that, okay? But you don't wean a non-rebreather. Okay, last one is oxy mask, which is what you're gonna see most often. And we have oxy kit and oxy tight too. So they're for kids also. And I don't have those with me, but um, all the masks have a tag on them that tell you the percentages. So the liter flow and then what percentage of oxygen you're getting. Which you would need, if this patient was wearing this and you're drawing ABGs, you would need to know this. Okay, because that's what you're going to put in for your percentage. You could either put the percentage or the liter flow um, for your ABGs. Okay. So the difference between an oxy mask and a non rebreather is, remember you can't wean a patient on a non rebreather. It's always 100%. This one, you can wean them from one liter to 15 liters and wean them down off of it. Or they could go all the way to one liter. You could leave them on one liter. It doesn't matter, okay? But the reason you can't do that with this one is, A, it has a reservoir bag, and B, it builds up CO2 inside the mask. So you can't do that. This one has five big holes in it, so they cannot rebreathe CO2. There's no way for CO2 to build up in this. That's why it can run all the way to one liter, okay? So um, this is the mask you're probably gonna see most often. It'll give up to 90% FiO2. So there's not a lot of patients that if this doesn't work, that this is gonna work, if that makes sense, because you only got a 10% oxygen difference. So a lot of times, um, if this doesn't work, then we're going to like a high flow nasal cannula or a BiPAP or something like that. But there is a certain percentage that I have had not work on this. They can't get their oxygen up, but we put them on an artery breather and they do come up. Okay, but most of the time, it's one or the other. We don't go from this to this a lot of times. Um, we are currently right now with the COVID situation, but typically they do fine just on this.